Commission, Brad Pomerantz here in the San Gabriel Valley, joined by Stephen Lanusa. He is a trustee with the Claremont Unified School Board. And I can't believe I'm saying this. Five years ago, teachers were getting pink slips because they were losing their jobs. Now we have a teacher shortage in the state of California. Is that true? It's true. And there's a relationship between the situations. Five years ago, we were in a very fiscal right. calamity. So uh, that's one way to say it. It was, a, a devast it was devastating. And teachers realized there was no job security. Right. So they found other careers that had more security. And it, as a result, now that we are in a better financial situation and we're hiring teachers, there are fewer teachers who are willing, very few people who want to become teachers. So listen to this. In the last decade, there has been a 70% drop in California of individuals preparing to become teachers. In 2015, only 15,000 individuals sought teaching credentials when we needed at least 22,000, at least. Right. So the numbers are quite dramatic. The question is, where do we go from here? here. I mean, oh, I feel like people talk about this crisis as we're going to fe face a teacher shortage, or are we facing it now? Depends on the district. Most okay. districts have positions that are unfilled. Some districts have as many as 60 to 90 positions unfilled. What does that mean day to day? That means they have to have subs or long-term subs, but there's also a shortage of subs. And because of policies and state regulations, a substitute can only be in a classroom a certain number of months okay. before they're rotated out because we can't have an uncredentialed substitute taking the place of a credentialed teacher. But if there is no credentialed teacher available, what are we supposed to do? Look at this policy and see how we can improve it. Okay. There's already and, talk in Sacramento. And you've talked to me about, haven't we changed the way we credential? The cre there are new credentials right. for visual and performing arts. So will this help the teacher shortage potentially, or really it, it's a side issue? It, it's, it gives us the ability to have more specialized teachers in the field. So if someone wants to be a visual and performing arts teacher, they can go straight for that credential rather than the English credential. So, so maybe it, it, may it can help. Track. Is the question a matter of compensation? Is that part of it? I mean, you hinted at it because five years ago people were being laid off. They felt as if, I don't want to get into this profession, but are we paying our teachers? Look, I think they should get a million dollars a year, but you know, that's, that's a, you know, I'm exaggerating. Well, but are we paying teachers well enough? According to the Department of Finance, between 2000 and 2013, individuals' wages went up 44%. Okay. Households went up 30%, because not everyone in a household works. Of course. Teachers' wages went up 6%. So the question about compensation is a good one. Why should a person go through post-secondary education, get advanced degrees, and be paid less than they could if they were doing something else? Yet there's a perception that teachers are paid handsomely, that they retire with huge pensions. Of course, it's not my kid's teacher, it's the other teacher's, but you, you understand where I'm going. Those are teachers who may have become superintendents. Ah. <laughs> and they are still considered right. teachers because that's the credential they have. Right. So they're retiring from very well-paid jobs with very high retirement pensions. But that's not the typical teacher. The typical teacher is getting a blue-collar pension. Sure. What about programs to entice teachers or potential teachers? We've heard some bills floated regarding loan forgiveness. We've heard bills regarding kind of residency programs, um, reestablishing one-stop shop for those that want to become teachers to make it easier. Could that be the ticket? Well, hopefully it can be because all those different approaches will help cover the 6,000 shortfall mm -hmm. between the 17,000 credentials that were issued and the 22,000 right. that are needed. Right. There are induction programs practices. Mm -hmm. We used to have BITSA, Beginning Teacher Support and Assessment. Mm -hmm. We no longer have that, but there's been a lot of talk about looking in some sort of induction education for new teachers that will support them as BITSA used to. Uh, I'm wondering if there's also the question of the way teachers are treated, kind of metaphorically speaking, you know, the Vagara case where teachers were being hammered because they are just riding the gravy train and, 
and so there's a lot of beating up of teachers in the media. Do you think that hurts or am I overstating it? Teachers are beat up. They're often blamed for situations that are beyond their control. Mm -hmm. They don't control the curriculum. Right. But they're blamed if the curriculum is unpopular. Right. They don't construct the tests that are being used to evaluate students and themselves. But they're criticized if they're not doing well or if their students aren't doing well on a test that may not have curriculum developed yet. Let's talk about the curriculum because California is undergoing a real shift and how it teaches its students. California has adopted the California State Standards based upon Common Core. Um, we're now, what, two, three years in? We're three years in for parts of it. Okay. The next generation science standards are just two years old. Right. But they're all based on Common Core, which is a curriculum that's based on very rigorous teaching, which is great because it leads to vigorous, rigorous learning. And let's talk about Common Core. It's interesting because I feel like when Common Core first was released, there was you know, a lot of anger and antipathy in various sectors of the nation or various portions of the state. Felt like it's kind of died down a bit, but President Trump at times railed against Common Core. It's not a federal program, so I'm not sure what the Trump administration can do about it, but what's your sense of the attitude toward Common Core? Well, countries that are high performing academically have national standards. Common Core was developed by governors right. from all the states to say, how can we as Americans also be a high performing country? How can we compete with these international countries that are doing so much better than us? What do they have that we don't? They have national standards. Right. So we're looking to see how can we make sure every American is at a minimum level of competitiveness. <sighs> Yet, you do have, you know, Trump speaking out against it. Uh, again, it's not a federal program. It's not No Child Left Behind or Every Student Succeeds. So I don't know if he can officially do something about it, but some states have dropped Common Core. Is Common Core at risk? That's for each state legislature to decide because states teach based on the state standards. Right. California's developed our standards, and we have curriculum that's developed to meet those standards. Textbooks are published to meet those standards, and all of that is to make sure that our students learn as well as possible. So where does California go from here? We have Common Core in place, California State Standards. We have Every Student Succeeds. President Obama had put that program in place to replace No Child Left Behind. We have a new federal administration. Is it unclear? It's not clear what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But again, it's not clear what was going to happen in terms of the teacher shortage. Right. Five years ago, you were right. We were giving out the pink slips. Right. Now we are hungering and clamoring for people. We've got programs to bring in new teachers. Programs such as internships, uh -huh. the city of Long Beach has a great residency program where new teachers are pre-service teachers. They don't have their credential yet. They're taking their teacher education classes. They're earning their credential, but they're learning it within a student teacher structure that's completely new. Right. They are like physicians who are in a residency. It's exciting. It it's is. exciting. You'll come back? Absolutely. He is Stephen Lanusa. He is a trustee with the Claremont Unified School District, also a fifth grade teacher in Bloomington, right? Yes, sir. In San Bernardino County. My name is Brad Palmer. Thanks for joining us on Local Edition.